guys and welcome back. Today I am working on a couple miniature watercolor pieces to go in these really cool oval frames that I found at a local antique shop. And I wanted to dive right in and create pieces for them immediately because I have a problem with buying frames with the intention of filling them with either other artwork or my own artwork and I usually forget about it. So I have a little stack of frames that I don't have anything to put in them yet, but I wanted to make sure that I got these ones filled so I can put them up on my wall because I love these frames. Uh, but I want to talk a little bit about working in miniature because this is something that I love doing. It's really enjoyable and satisfying. And I used to do a lot more of them when I uh, was in school and I was first starting out with this channel. And there's a lot of things that I found really beneficial with working in such a small scale. I found that when I'm working so small, I've start getting the ball rolling and being a little bit more experimental and these two pieces, the one that I feel like I really pushed a little bit more than what I normally would have if it was a larger piece is the simple, um, just the portrait of the girl, not the skull girl, but the, the normal portrait one. And that one, I decided that I wanted to incorporate a little bit more splotchy watercolor texture. I wanted things to blend together a little bit more. And I find that when it's smaller, it's easier for me to grasp pushing these texture changes with watercolors. So I'm able to quickly enact these very impactful effects with much smaller brushes, ones that I'm a lot more comfortable with because I tend to gravitate towards smaller brushes. So when I'm working smaller, I can do these more grandiose gestures and I can see the effect much more immediately. And it doesn't feel quite as harrowing to use that same kind of brush stroke on a much, much larger scale. So I I actually really enjoy that. I think that I want to push that a lot more. This is making me want to do a lot more small pieces that I can really push what I'm getting with my watercolors. Because if I can get it to work in a small scale and figure out what looks good and what kind of looseness I like to see in my small stuff, maybe I can start moving into incorporating that into larger stuff, committing to getting larger brushes and larger gestural motions with my whole arm rather than just really small ones. So that is something that I really like to work on is getting more energy into my watercolor pieces and looseness to it. I want things to be expressive and energized. And this I think is a good first step moving forward towards that is doing very manageable micro examples of that for myself so I can start getting my toes and dipping them in the water of more expressive brush strokes. So I think that this will be a really fun way to start getting an idea of how to compose things with looser elements. I think overall it will not get me the muscle memory or the practice I need to create loose, really energetic brush strokes, but it will get me used to looking at pieces that include things like that, that have that kind of a very graphic interaction or including much more blended colors. And by what I mean by blended is where I can incorporate different colors and watercolors so that the watercolor themselves blend together and create that really gorgeous intermingling that watercolor does. That's something that I really almost never do. And it's a huge benefit with watercolor is that watercolor likes to behave in such a gorgeous way. And maybe that's why I love watercolor so much is that it is very controllable. I can get the effects that I want. And now I'm starting to realize that I want to incorporate things that let the watercolor behave the way it wants to and to be a little bit more free. But I think that, yeah, working in smaller scale like this, I can start to get used to seeing elements of my work that I'm going to keep or things that I'm very used to juxtaposed next to elements that I'm not used to, like letting these colors really fuse together and blend in ways that I normally would not want or I would try to control. That is, though, something that's very important when you're creating artwork is to work within the dimensions of your final piece. So if you're doing thumbnailing or anything like that, any preliminary stuff, make sure that it has the same dimensions as, dimensions as your final or else you can get a very skewed look to it and your composition won't work the same way as it will in your final. So that's something that I kind of forgot for this one with the ovals. I had it designed out when I was sketching, but when it came to actually painting it, I I decided that I was just gonna fill it all in and then I would let it bleed out and then I could just cut it out from that and it would be fine, but it did affect the way that I painted it. And 
that's just something to remember next time for me is to always stay true to the final dimensions. But another thing that working so small helps me push is the way that I'm using my colors. Uh, I find that when I'm doing larger pieces, the bigger they get, the more specific I am with the layering of colors and the planning that I do. So when I'm doing a larger piece, I do a lot more color studies and I will do smaller ones and then build up and then do much more complicated color studies. And I write down notes even sometimes of how I layer the colors so that I know exactly how to replicate that in the final. Because I've dedicated so much time to it and so much paper and resources and paint, I want to make sure that it turns out the way that I planned. So the larger it is, again, the more time I spend planning it out and being very specific about how it is going to end up looking. But when I'm working so small, I find that it can be a lot more freeing. I let myself loosen up a little bit. For these two paintings, I did have a little scrap of paper, but instead of doing a color comp like I normally do where I'm putting the colors into a little example of the line work and filling it in exactly how it would be. I was just putting colors together, seeing how they blended, how I liked those together and how ultimately I liked it with the frame themselves and with the pieces. And then I just let myself go a little bit freer with that. I started painting just based on that really quick palette that I had. And Overall, I know that I create better pieces when I do have a plan, when I've done color studies, but because these are small and they were quick to create, it let me see how I wanted to incorporate color and it let me adapt it as I was working on it. And I do think that's important for me to get better at when I'm working on those color comps in the future, on things that are more planned out is that I have this experience of working more freely. I see these color combinations that I normally wouldn't have thought of because I was working very impromptu on this. So for that first character that I painted, her skin ended up this really interesting yellowy color. Interesting for me that is because I normally don't end up with a skin tone that looks quite like that, that has greens and blues and yellows in that way. And because it was very step by step, I was planning it out as I was painting on it, I ended up very differently than if I would have planned it out. I never would have planned that out. And that's helpful because I like how the green shows with the yellow, but I also like how this really pale orange color is coming through on her lips and her nose. I like how that looks with the yellow. I like those colors together. And again, I never would have thought of those if I had been planned out. So that just helps me see the possibilities of what I could do in the future when I am being very specific about the order and everything. And the background for this final piece is another example of that. I wasn't entirely sure how dark or what direction I wanted it. So I ended up doing several layers between this magenta color and my Payne's gray. And then I would blot it off. And then I tried blotting on more condensed of that magenta color where it was like really pure paint. And then I would blot that off and add a little bit more Payne's gray. It was a very give and take, push and pull kind of process to get to this final thing. And I love the final result. It looks really textured and worn out, which is absolutely the look that I wanted to go with these frames. And it all happened because I couldn't really decide exactly what direction it needed to go and how far to push it. And I ended up blotting it off. I ended up getting it wet and trying to remove some of the color. And that process created this interesting texture. Now, if I was to incorporate that kind of a texture into a finished piece, I would do it a lot more strategically and I would know what colors to make sure to layer and how many layers the paper could take because there is a point where you can overwork paper so that it just can't really take more layers and look nice anymore. But this did show me that there are a few more techniques that I could really incorporate to create a very weathered look to it. And that is it. I ended up deciding to put prints in the frames rather than the originals since I didn't actually want to cut up the originals. I liked how they looked in the end, which actually means that I will have these available at my art shop. So if you'd like to own the originals from today, I have a link in the description as well as in the end card that'll happen in just a second. And I do post every Wednesdays and Saturdays, but this week I will be posting on Friday instead since I'm part of the YouTube Artist Collective and we'll be posting our new theme on Friday. But yeah, stay tuned for that. And that is it for today. So I'll see you guys at my next one.